Hey guys, we're just going to do some quick practice to kind of send us into our review day. All right. So um, the first one gives you a setup where you can practice some of those mortgage payment questions. So it says, consider the mortgage loan of 210000 at a nominal 5% yearly interest rate that's applied monthly. Um, monthly payments are twelve fifty dollars are going to be made on the loan. Fabulous. All right. So there's all those key numbers that we need right there. 5% monthly payment, right? We are not going to do part A. We don't need to do that part. Let's go all the way down to part B. So just make sure that you have your paper in front of you because you're not going to be able to see it on my paper here. It says use the formula, um, which gives the amount after N monthly payments of how much is owed at the end of, in this case, eight years. So that's what we're looking to calculate here. All right. Always, 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 always start it by figuring out what you know. So the mortgage or the initial loan or the principal value is $200,010. Um, your R value, 5% is going to be 0 0.05 divided by 12. Your N value. So if it's eight years, it's eight years times 12 months. That's going to be 96 right there. All right. Should double check, make sure I don't do something silly. Yep. Um, and then our um, M value. So the monthly payment is 1250. All right. Let's start plugging on in. So to figure out how much you owe after eight years, that's really after 96 payments. So we're going to plug in 210,000. And then times, here's where we have that game of, we see that one plus R in multiple spots. Now you can write it out in there, or maybe off to the side, we can figure out what is gonna be that one plus R value. So it's gonna be one plus 0 0.05 over 12. So one plus 0 0.05 over 12 is kinda nasty, so I'm gonna store that in X. So on my calculator, storing it in X. So that means into my work, now I'm going to put an X right here. So just to make sure that we're following, I'll use a red X for that little piece of it. And then I'm going to raise that to the 96th power and then minus 1250. And then one minus Here's going to be that same thing. So I'm going to put that red X there to the 96th power and then all over one minus. And then there's that same expression again. So I'm going to put the X there. All right. If you choose to do that, please make sure it's clear on your paper what X is representing. All right? Don't just randomly throw variables in there without defining them or write it all out completely. All right, let's give it a try. Hopefully I set everything up correctly this time, unlike when I was doing the one the other day. That was a little oops. All right, let's go. We have 210,000 times X, and then I'm going to raise that to the 96 power, and then subtract our alpha Y equals, I got 1250, and then times 1 minus, here's X, raise that to the 96 power, and then close up that top parenthesis. And then on the bottom, one minus X all by itself. All right. What I end up with here is 165,847 dollars. And since it's money, I would say 31 cents. That's what's left after eight years, which actually makes sense because most loans, which is something you might not know for houses, um, they're either 30 years, sometimes they're 15 years, but they, they're meant to be paid off over a long amount of time. So it's not super surprising that after eight years that it's come down from 210 and it's still only, or it's still $165,000. So there's the first one. So just using those values, plugging in, calculating. On the next page, there's a couple more that I wanted to take a look at. So it says, given the sequence, Write a recursive and an explicit rule to find the nth term. All right. So since we don't know what type of sequence, it doesn't specify here, you have to be thinking to yourselves, is it arithmetic or is it geometric? That should kind of be the question that you're asking yourself. So if we look, 
it definitely looks like we're subtracting. It looks like minus four, minus four, minus four. So based on that, we are talking about an arithmetic sequence here, right? To write a recursive and an explicit. Well, re explicit, we know the formula. So that's me a sub one plus n minus one times d. Whereas over here, to do it recursively, you're going to tell me the first term and then give me a rule to get the nth term, right? So since this is the explicit, just to make that clear, I just need to plug in for the first term, that's 21, and then my common difference is negative 4. Everything else with the ends stays. So that would be my answer. Please make sure if you don't distribute that, that you put parentheses around it so it doesn't look like you're saying n minus 1 minus 4. It needs to look like it's n minus 1 times negative 4, okay? Over here for recursive, first term's 21. And then to get from one term to the next, I would take the term before it, subtract 4. Take the term before it, subtract 4. So we would take the term before a sub n and then subtract 4. That's it. All right. So there's our explicit. There's our recursive. All right. Determine the common ratio of the sequence given. Common ratio only applies to when you have a geometric sequence. And that can always be calculated by taking any term and dividing it by the term before it. So specifically here, we could take the second term, divide it by the first. And now you could have done that with any of the terms. You could do third divided by second, but 15 over 12. Feel free if you're not feeling your mental math. 1.25 would be fine. You could math frack it and say 5 fourths. That would be fine as well. I'd probably leave it as 5 fourths, but either way. So that's what you're multiplying by to get from one term to the next. So if you wanted to check, you could even say, all right, let's do 12 times 5 fourths. Yep, that'll give me 15, and then times 5 fourths, and there's that 18.75. All right, last one. Now it says find the sum of the first 18 terms of the sequence given in question 2. All right, well, question 2 is arithmetic. So you're finding an arithmetic sum. This is the one formula you have to memorize, right? And so S sub N equals N over 2 times A sub 1 plus A sub N. So let's think about what we know at this point from question 2. Um, we know that if we're adding up 18 terms, that means N would be 18. Uh, the first term is 21 we need to find the nth term, which in this case would be a sub 18. So maybe a little off to the side over here. We need to find a sub 18. The good thing is you wrote an explicit formula. So use it to find the 18th term. So 21 plus 18 minus 1 times that common difference of negative 4. So you can plug right on into your calculator. So 21 plus turns out to be 17 times negative 4. And so we'd get negative 47 because those terms are going down. So it makes sense that you're going to end up with a negative number <coughs> for that 18th term. So if the 18th term is negative 47, now we can plug all that in here. So let me slide up just a little bit. So the sum of the first 18 terms, well, it would be 18 over 2, and then 21 plus negative 47. All right. There's your post video question right there. What's that answer? Right. Um, so make sure I want you to answer that. And then because it's our review day, look at the review sheet and let me know what questions do we want to go over on the review sheet together. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.